those issues where we had to go on, on that break. We we're talking about the situation as it is now and what it will say, what, how, it, how it will affect democracy in the other African countries back here. Well, where the military has to be like a check on the politicians. Well, uh, that's the theory. The practice in Africa is that the African Union has a policy of obligatory non-recognition of illegal governments and their declaration on uh, democracy, rule of law, and whatever uh, forbids according recognition to illegal regimes. So the AU right now might be caught between the rock and the hard place. Uh, on the one hand, you are not to recognize any unconstitutional government. On the other hand, uh, it's a successful revolution. And my late colleague, uh, Abiola Joe used to say that successful revolutions beget their own legality. Yeah. So the AU might be compared to really uh, take cognizance of real politic, uh, because Egyptians generally are happy with the change, despite the arguments on propriety or lack of same. So my, my hunch is that the other African countries are mortified by what happened in Egypt because they don't know who might be next. Uh, now I know, for instance, that Nigeria has decried the development, which gives me a hint that maybe Nigeria will not be very comfortable. But I remember what the interior minister of the Sandinistas used to say, Thomas Borges, that the customs house is here to be built that can prevent the export of good examples. So uh, all African states should be wary uh, of uh, the military uh, who might decide to step in if and when uh, there's that necessity. Uh, there's nothing that invites the military more than bad government. So if you are not accountable, you are not transparent, you are condoning corruption, and you are behaving recklessly, then it's an open invitation uh, to the junta to step in under the guise of saving the nation to steal your thunder from you. But of, yeah. As we've seen over the years and in our own history, over the years, every time the military has stepped in, it's always under that guise. But from what we have seen, it's like we're always left wars off. Some people are saying, well, maybe not necessarily. What do you think about that? Well, it, sometimes uh, it might be a necessity. When you have an obdurate regime that is self-seeking, self-serving, and self-preserving, uh, the only alternative to such an insensate regime will be uh, a military push. But uh, I experience you are damn right, has not been very good. 30 years of military dictatorship has left us in the lurch. And Egypt, too, it's not the first time they're experiencing military dictatorship, right from Nasser uh, to the post uh, uh, Mubarak period. So uh, it's familiar territory. And that is why even the West, especially the United States, that has a large stake. Uh, in what happens in Egypt, uh, Obama has told the government to make the transition brisk, short and sharp. So I don't see uh, this regime lasting for longer than six months at the very worst. So they are going to set up elections. The only problem they are going to face is whether or not the Muslim Brotherhood want to participate uh, in any uh, new uh, electoral process. Because one's beaten twice shy. They say, well, the game is not what they can do. Why should we again put any stock in any new election? That, I think, is the problem. Uh, Professor, as we were almost out of time, but is it possible to separate politics from religion? Well, religion talks about man's relationship with the Almighty. It should be a private affair. You know, like Montesquieu used to say, uh, the English are so free that in England, every Englishman has the right to go to heaven the way he wants. So you, you, if you want to face Jerusalem, good for you. If you want to face Mecca, good for you. But separate wheat from chaff. In other words, the world does not favor theocracy. Uh, leave governance to human beings. Leave God out of it. So anybody who plays religious politics will suffer the fate that the uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, have suffered in Egypt. I mean, Egyptians really, they don't want religious politics. And they don't want theocracies. Why uh, Saudi Arabia is happy is because Islamic, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, are setting examples against uh, the emirs that are ruling in the Gulf, especially Saudi Arabia. The House of Saud cannot be happy uh, if the Muslim Brotherhood are not caged. So it's a very dicey situation. Iran is a theocracy. Uh, 
Saudi Arabia is a theocracy. The Taliban's want Afghanistan to be a theocracy. Forces in Pakistan want Pakistan to be ruled by uh, mullahs and, uh, you know, and whatever. So in Nigeria, for instance, if you are talking about our constitution is clear. Uh, Section 10 of our constitution says that shall not be a state religion. Yet, I know what my late colleague used to say, Dr. Latif Adigbite. He used to say, Nigeria is not a secular state. He used to say, we are a multi-religious state. I don't know, it's that nice distinction. I think we are a secular state. But there are many who say, Nigeria is not a secular state. We have Muslims, we have Christians, we have animists, and we have non-believers and agnostics. So, we have to draw the line. Leave religion out of politics if you want peace and quiet. As soon as you bring religion into politics, that's a recipe for disaster. Thank you very much, Professor Akimi Bode of the International.